I think sometimes people over index valuation. Uh, sometimes people over index uh, simplifying the cap table and having as less names as possible on it. I think this is different for every startup, right? It depends on what kind of capital do you need. Uh, uh, to prove your concept or get your MVP out, you need a million dollars. Then probably the right stage to raise is uh, at the concept itself. Hello everyone, welcome back to our channel StartupLanes.com. I am Pranjal Jaiswal and I take interviews of several angel investors of India. Today we have with us Mr. Suhail Sami. He is the CEO of Bharat Pay and he is also the winner of Economic Times Most Promising Leader of Asia Award. He has built many businesses from scratch as well as helped turn around and grow existing businesses. He invests in early stage companies across consumer, consumer tech and SaaS spaces. With this, let's dive into this video. I'm Pranjal Jaiswal from Startup Lens. It's really great to have you here, sir. And I would please request you to introduce yourself. Thanks, Pranjal. My pleasure. Uh, I'm the CEO of Bharat Pay. Uh, I uh, have been in the FinTech universe for now the last couple of years. But before this, my background was uh, consumer. Uh, I launched and scaled the FMCG business for the RP Sanjeev Goenka group and uh, and before that I had spent a bunch of time in McKinsey, uh, was an associate partner at McKinsey when I left. Uh, I belong to Delhi, uh, I love sort of uh, early stage companies and uh, and therefore sort of invest uh, in a bunch. So my first question for you sir, what is your investing philosophy? <laughs> it's uh, It's quite simple at one level i only invest in things i understand so therefore uh, uh, a lot of the investments tend to be in the consumer space consumer tech space uh, fintech space uh, and a bit into b2b uh, businesses um, and the second philosophy is i i need to like sort of the uh, founding team which is building it it is not only about pedigree of the founders but sort of uh, clarity of vision on what they are trying to build and sort of uh, my own sense of assessment on are they in this for the long haul or not right so um, as long as it it's a idea in the space i understand and as long as i get convinced by founders vision and sort of staying power then uh, then rest is sort of a simple process for me what has been the most important investing lesson you have learned so far uh, i think uh, my uh, biggest learning and that's why i only invest in spaces i understand i think uh, i've also made money in a lot of investments where i didn't uh, understand the sector but a lot of people were investing so i uh, for a lack of a better word, did a FOMO check. Uh, but uh, uh, like, I think I do a lot of this uh, for excitement and fun and to be able to help entrepreneurs uh, and to be able to learn from them as well. Right? Because uh, you think you are going to teach them something, but most times you end up sort of learning from them. Yeah. Uh, if I don't have that excitement uh, with a company and that can only happen if I like the founder, I like the uh, sector and I have a personal interest in the sector. Uh, if those conditions are not met, no matter whether the startup does well or uh, poorly, um, I don't get sort of personally excited, right? So I've sort of uh, stopped doing that and uh, and started focusing on things which uh, I can sort of contribute value. Which has been your best investment till date? <laughs> it's difficult uh, to say what is best, yeah. I think... Mm -hmm. uh, company I like uh, uh, or company which is sort of now uh, big some of the big companies I invested in uh, are Mama Earth uh, is Rupik uh, which is sort of a gold loan business based out of Bangalore Mama Earth most people now know it's sort of a large consumer D2C brand yes. uh, but um, but I think there are tons of other investments um, uh, and whether investment makes money for me or not uh, is a material I think uh, where I get most excited by is sort of founders uh, solving tough challenges right and uh, and to that extent for example when Mama started now it seems like a simple story of DTC which a lot of people are doing mm -hmm. but at that time the big question was DTC cannot uh, scale right um, uh, like everyone had said DTC, yeah, interesting. Maybe it can become a hundred crore company, right? So, um, but um, uh, but that time, sort of solving for it was sort of very exciting, and how to build it large was very exciting. Uh, today, uh, there's this company I really like called Billora uh, Cosmetics, which uh, 
which is sort of trying to build clean label and uh, really really high quality clean products uh, in the cosmetic space right again very difficult problem to solve because in um, cosmetics uh, the most important uh, element is how do i look after applying yes. right clean is a secondary thought uh, and uh, to deliver high quality fashion and sort of uh, look and feel while keeping the product clean is a very very interesting sort of uh, product challenge itself right so that's sort of very exciting uh, then i'm sort of invested in someone who's trying to build a um, product uh, or a credit card for influencers and these are sort of people who all earn enough money but no one wants to give them a credit card because there is no sort of recurring salary right so yeah. again a very interesting problem to solve on how do you social proof it how do you uh, sort of write them for limits etc etc right so so i think if the problem is exciting i enjoy it but um, but from a uh, sort of a financial reward point of view i would uh, believe sort of mama earth and rupika to outliers so it's like the excitement that rises yeah absolutely can you share any investing mistake that you have made and the lessons we can learn from them no yaar yeah, uh, to be honest uh, i think some of my investments which have also not uh, made money uh, i wouldn't even in hindsight call them mistakes uh, mm-hmm. i would still invest in them uh, my uh, i think one thing i learned sort of very early is uh, uh, like space needs to be uh exciting and the founder needs to be exciting and i think i have sort of stuck to that discipline uh throughout right uh now some of these companies may have not uh really scaled because they lost invest uh, investor favor uh because of some external conditions or uh, a sort of a high capability founder could not execute in the right way or could not build the right company culture um I don't think I would have ever been able to understand that before investing, right? Mm-hmm. So I would still have. Uh, if I even invest today, I think I will make the same mistakes I have made <laughs> throughout. Uh, but um, but this is eventually investing, right? You are not expecting every investment of yours to turn to a commercial success. Uh, sometimes it's about backing things you believe in. Sometimes it's about backing founders you believe in. uh and you hope that some of them will make enough money to cover for uh, whatever you've invested right so yeah. so i would still stick with that thesis uh though i've sort of done many investments for example in uh, a couple of investments in the cloud kitchen space uh which i thought was a very exciting space and indians love to eat and indians love to eat out they didn't scale because i think all investors probably got worried that everyone from zomato swiggy etc is sort of launching their own cloud kitchens and therefore they may not room for a new player and uh, in hindsight very easy to say but when i did the investment that was not the case right so uh, so uh, so it's a bad investment in hindsight uh, but uh, i'm still reasonably sure that uh, after all these learnings if i would have come across the same company 3 years back i would have still invested uh, in it. is there any particular author investor who has a significant influence in your investing perspective sir um like of course you learn from a lot of people right so uh, i uh, learn a lot from sort of a couple of my friends at sequoia who uh, sort of have a very nice way of sort of uh, evaluating deals and and uh, it's also like sometimes uh, you find some things exciting but the question is is it worth taking the risk today or would you rather wait and participate in the next round right some of this mm-hmm. thinking sort of i learn from people at sequoia uh, some things i learn from someone like kunal uh, kunal uh, shah i mean uh, like is a very simple philosophy uh, jo bhi sector mein i understand any good founder who comes to me i will write a check right <laughs> like he sometimes I, i joke with him that he doesn't even do any diligence <laughs> he only decides the check size uh and to be honest i think i think that's a fair approach as well right so uh, like why choose like if you like the founder you understand the space and you can help him uh, you invest here uh, like uh, sort of structurally probabilities will work out for you right so uh, again um like i learned from someone who used to back every mckinsey uh, founder uh, and it was not mckinsey people are better suited to run startups but it was i know he is ex mckinsey he is made of the same dna i am made of uh, uh, i can by and large trust all mckinsey people on ethics uh, etc 
uh, and these are sort of important ingredients of a evaluation right so if i on an average back every mckinsey founder uh, structurally i will hope, um, hopefully at least make money right so so i think some of these things uh, you start learning over the period of time and you start picking from uh, investors uh, but uh, eventually everyone's investment thesis is their own right so mm-hmm. um, i over index founder uh, conviction because i believe dhanda to sab ban sakte hain uh it's about who will uh be smart enough to understand what is working what is not working keep changing the business to su- uh, to basically scale what is working uh and not lose too much money in things which are not working right so yeah. uh, and uh, and equally importantly every business goes through cycles right uh, there are good times there are bad times there are uh investment cycles where everyone wants to give you a check there are times where uh, market is tight and no one wants to write a check right so can the founder persevere uh, through all the uh, all the bad times and can he keep his calm and not let some time success go to his head right so yeah. uh, if you sort of uh, deal that uh, then it's sort of a um, uh, that's my thesis right it's not necessarily learned from someone uh, but it is sort of drawing inspiration from a lot of people and their investment styles uh, and adding your own personal touch to it what would be your advice uh, for entrepreneurs seeking funds i think my usual advice to founders i think uh, it's very important on who you are getting on the cap table uh, i think and everyone goes through this uh, and how i've been having seen so many investments i've done uh, i think sometimes people over index valuation uh, sometimes people over index uh, simplifying the cap table and having as less names as possible on it sometimes people over index the size of the check they are raising uh, while many of these are important uh, but to me especially at a early stage company uh, who is the investor backing you and what value can he add to your business uh, is sort of the only uh, question i would sort of give highest priority to right so Uh, of course they can't be ridiculous terms for you but uh, but uh, but i think if i get right set of investors around me who can guide me who can coach me mm-hmm. who can open doors for me uh, uh, and sort of at least let me get the min- uh, minimum viable product out to the market uh, and show some initial proof of success uh, valuation check size etc can be sort of figured out over the later rounds right mm-hmm. because uh, uh because in the beginning it's not about raising a big check and a big valuation uh it's about raising enough to get your product out there and sort of prove that the idea works right and uh, and in fact sometimes i believe raising a too big a valuation early on uh puts you at a disadvantage because if your minimum viable product is not really uh developing the way you want it to uh it sort of puts the company at risk in the following rounds right so yes. uh, so i think uh, that sort of my advice choose carefully who you are getting on that uh, table uh, uh like figure out who are the people uh, who are relevant to you uh reach out to them versus take money from anyone do you invest in specific sectors if yes then which are they yeah i do only invest in consumer consumer tech uh, <clears throat> and like consumer it includes brands uh, and marketplaces etc uh and uh, and financial services right so uh, whether it is alternate lending whether it is payments whether it's insurance uh and and sometimes i do uh, sort of invest in b2b businesses uh, especially smb focused b2b businesses because that's something which i understand deeply given the bharat pay sort of uh, experience mm-hmm. uh, outside of these sectors no matter uh, how good the idea how good the founder i stay away unless it's a founder who's my friend and of course your friend you will back uh, mm-hmm. not because i don't um, sort of uh, think the ideas are great but only because if i am not able to add value to you uh, there will be better investors for you right so um, so i would sort of tend to stay away what are your views about the startup ecosystem in india developing developing very rapidly and uh, and i think we've obviously had a as a startup uh, universe we've had great last couple of years uh, and uh, uh, like i do think the momentum is sort of likely to continue even if it doesn't i think uh, uh, i think uh, everything goes through cycles so it will sort of come back i think what has happened with 
companies like uh, Zomato, Nike, Policy Bazaar all going public. It sort of increased uh, both the confidence on the sector. It's increased sort of uh, uh, people's ability to invest into India. Like international funds are now getting because they are now seeing actual exits happen, and uh, it's also helped you sort of get talent excited about the opportunity, right? Because uh, three four years back, a lot of uh, people considering startups will say, "Esop, yeah, it's never going to materialize into any real money, right?" Now people understand it can materialize into real money and sometimes very big money. and uh, that sort of uh, made it uh, lucrative to a lot of uh, employees who don't want to necessarily start something of their own but want to see that uh, excitement of a early stage company right so so i think both from a talent point of view and an access point of uh, access to capital point of view we've come a long way in the last 2 3 years uh, and even if there is sort of a down cycle i don't think we are ever going back to the 3 year old version of it right uh, yeah. Temper down capital, maybe uh, capital deployed, maybe fifty percent of uh, previous year. But I don't think we are ever going back to like a three or four year old version. And I think the excitement of people to join the startup universe uh, is now here to stay. What, according to you, is more important: team, idea, traction, etc. Team, yeah. Uh, I I over index on team as I already said, uh, especially early stage, right? What is important is different at different times of a uh, 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 journey of a company, right? Uh, uh, in the beginning, the only two things which matter are uh, what is the space you are going after, uh, because I do believe that uh, great businesses are built on the back of tailwinds. You can't be uh, saying I'm a great founder, but I'm going to. Build a very exciting uh, business in a category. I know ten years uh, trend is going to shrink, right? So okay. if you get into the right space uh, and you have a great team, uh, you have to then back the team to figure out what works and keep on changing. Sort of, it may mean five pivots, right? Like very few startups uh, end up exactly as the way they have thought on day one, right? Every company goes through pivots, and which is natural, right? Uh, paper pay, no matter how much exercise you do, you can never really get to what will work in the market. Uh, uh, and I do believe sort of a great founding team uh, becomes a great startup because their ability to take these calls and pivot as and when required tends to be higher. right so so when i look at investing uh, at like seed stage or series a stage i over index the space they are in and i over index the founding team uh, obviously a later stage investor when if you're doing a series c series d uh, great team is not going to cut it unless there is not even a mvp which is sort of uh, at least shown meaningful traction right but yeah. uh, at the stage we are talking angel investing i, I think Uh, I would um, like team is sort of the biggest metric I look at. What is the value addition that a founder gets with your investments? It's a it's a function of what founder wants. Yeah, to be honest, I think um, I also know that uh, I come from a school of thought. जो धंधा बना रहा है उसी को सबसे ज़्यादा समझ आता है, right? So I don't think I will understand a founder's business ever better than him. Uh, the value i can add uh, can be as simple as sort of making the necessary introductions uh, uh, for potential business for potential fundraise uh, for sort of uh, potential vendors who can help you build uh, some of the legs of your product uh, the other value sort of i can add is uh, sort of having uh, gone through this journey myself uh, and now twice over uh, i have faced many of the challenges which a lot of the founders face uh, as they scale their business right and and their answer may be different than what my answer was at that point of time but uh, but it's sometimes useful to brainstorm with someone who is sort of faced similar challenges right and uh, uh, here here the other person out eventually you may decide and do something very different and i will still back you right but uh, but sometimes it's just important to have a sounding board who is uh, uh, who sort of gone through that journey himself uh, and can give you his advice on what worked for him and what didn't work for him right so uh, if you can learn from my mistakes uh, and not repeat the same ones that sort of uh, more than enough for me yeah what according to you is the perfect time for a startup to raise funds concept stage very early stage early stage growth stage or stable stage i think this is different for every startup right it depends on what kind of capital do you need uh, 
uh, to prove your concept or get your MVP out, you need a million dollars. Then probably the right stage to raise is uh, at the concept itself. Uh, if your MVP is going to only cost you like 20, 30 lakh, 50 lakh, which may be true for a lot of consumer businesses as they launch or uh, brand uh, type products, then I think it's better to launch when your first set of products are ready and you're willing to sort of uh, invest performance marketing money behind them, right? So um, uh, I don't think there is sort of a, it's both what is the right stage to raise and what is the check size to raise, right? So um, both are sort of very heavily dependent on uh, what business you are building. In mm -hmm. tech, you need large amount of capital upfront typically, uh, unless it's a B2B business, right? So it's a yeah. B2B consumer tech business, someone is trying to build a Nika type marketplace, uh, not raising very early on or raising a very small check is not helpful uh, because you will not be able to do much. Uh, you will not be able to get even enough consumers on the platform or excite enough brands to list on your platform. Uh, like I would theoretically say you need a minimum million dollar seed, right? Uh, but if someone is building, let's say a DTC brand in a category which has high gross margins, uh, then uh, either you raise slightly later or you raise a much smaller check, right? Or like you can very easily in a couple of crores, uh, get the product ready, hit the market, get to some 20, 30 lakh rupees of sales per month uh, and get some repeat behavior going and some product feedback going, right? So that you know when you raise the next check, uh, what to change and how to quickly scale, right? So, uh, so I think uh, both what, how early and how, what part of your journey you raise a check at and how big a check you raise uh, varies so much by sort of which sector you are in and how, uh, how sort of the founder wants to play. And sometimes it's also a function of uh, access to good capital, right? Uh, if a great investor is coming and saying, I want to write a check today, you are not going to tell him that, oh, uh, no, sorry, it's uh, too early. Uh, two months later, I will uh, come back to you, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes just raise then like, uh, if you have a if you have a list of these are my top five uh, priority investors and if one of them writes a check to you you would take mm -hmm. it and right so yeah. uh, so it's sort of a, a highly highly uh, sort of dependent on multiple factors some of them not even in your control would you like to share any of your recent investments and why did you select them so I think uh, we briefly talked about Billora uh, that's uh, uh, I love that company because it is trying to solve for something uh, which is unsolved in the clean level space, mm -hmm. right? Uh, trying to get cosmetics products out which are uh, good for your skin uh, is very, very tough, right? And um, and I do sort of uh, believe the founders are going about it in the right way. Uh, Ainara, I know personally as a founder for many years uh, uh, and she's sort of leaving no stone unturned uh, uh, to sort of uh, get the right product out. Uh, and it was very tough to uh, for her to get the uh, angel round in because uh, like a lot of people said, yeah, who cares about clean in cosmetics? Mm -hmm. But that's not true. You look at globally, if you look at Honest Company, it's a, it's a billion dollar company today. It's clean level cosmetics, right? So, uh, so that was sort of very exciting. And now she's uh, really cracking it. She's sort of raised uh, a larger round from sort of Sequoia after that, uh, doing really well. The other company I again briefly talked about is Pixel, which is sort of uh, uh, building uh, a credit card for sort of uh, uh, influencers. Again, a very interesting problem to solve. Uh, and I think there's this third company I like sort of, which is called Tortoise. It's again in the FinTech space. Uh, uh, we talk a lot about Buy Now Pay Later. Uh, we've launched our Buy Now Pay Later as Bharat Pay. Uh, he's building something which I classify as pay now buy later, which is like, uh, you know, you want to buy an iPhone 12 months down the line. Mm -hmm. Why don't you start saving for it right now? And if you're doing that, I will give you sort of a uh, uh, discount on the iPhone, right? It's great for you because you're getting a discount. Uh, it is great for the brand uh, because they're getting a short sale at some point of time. Uh, it's sort of helping both the brands getting uh, their customer acquisition costs low and getting a short revenue. And it is helping the consumer by giving them sort of great deals uh, if they have decided to make the purchase, right? So that's, I find something very exciting in the wave of all this buy now, pay later. Someone is sort of trying to build pay now and you will get the product much later, right? So, uh, so that's sort of very exciting. And uh, so I think these are the two, three I've sort of done recently.
is there anyone you would like to thank for supporting you in investments <laughs> lot lot of the vc community actually um, uh, they have sort of always uh, been kind in uh, in discussing many of the opportunities with me getting me into their deals and sort of uh, having a patient ear to me when i sort of uh, try and connect them to some of the founders i have invested in uh but i think most of all uh, the founders themselves yeah i think i have learned so much i think uh, like uh, and i said this in the beginning you feel that you are going to add value but uh, but when you have like 60 investments like i do uh and you speak to each of the founders even let's say once a month sometimes once in two months uh, you hear 60 points of views right and uh, and that sort of enriches you so much that uh, uh, a lot of times your business you are solving for day to day and you are not thinking big picture uh, it sort of forces you to think big picture and many of those things then you can sort of uh, translate into changes at your own business right so uh, i'm very sort of uh, proud of all the founders i work uh work with or i have invested in uh whether they have sort of become big or not uh but i think from uh, most of them i have sort of learned uh, something very useful for myself what is your feedback on startuplanes.com yes, i think you guys are doing a great job yeah uh, i think uh, sort of taking out uh, time to recognize large uh, uh, angel investors a, a long time i think a lot of us don't do it to make money uh, uh, it is uh, most of us have sort of uh, enough money uh, to not care about incremental money mm-hmm. uh, a lot of us are running uh, large companies uh, which we've sort of built uh, where no matter how much money we make elsewhere uh, uh, it will always pale in comparison with what is at risk or what is value at stake in our own startup mm-hmm. uh, so a lot of us sort of do this um, to help sort of the entrepreneurial network uh, in the country uh, a lot of us do this to help uh, sort of entrepreneurs uh, learn from our mistakes or learn from what worked for us uh, and uh, and uh, sort of uh, scale their businesses uh, and uh, and this is sort of uh, financial performance is sort of a lot of people know it because you say uh, oh kunal shah was a early investor here or so is he was a early investor here and they made tons of money but uh but no one sort of really recognizes the um effort and what it is taking away f- from each one of us right every minute spent on a startup is one minute taken away from your own business right so, uh, so i think you guys sort of are doing a great job of recognizing all of that and uh, and thank you for doing that so which are the first three slides that you look in a pitch deck i only look at the uh team page and i only look at the what are you trying to solve i don't even look at a third page right so uh, i think these are the only two pages which matter for me so how do you define a startup again um, <laughs> like uh, everyone will go through uh, their definition of it uh, i think to me a startup is a company which is still fast evolving uh, and does not know at least 60 70% of the eventual how the product uh, will look like right uh, mm-hmm. you figured that and it's only about uh, and once you figured that and once you figured out your go to market strategy and it is just about scaling it year after year uh, to me a company sort of ceases to be a startup uh, right so uh, so zomato is not a startup for me any longer uh, because they know what they are building and uh, um, and like now it's only about scaling that improving the operating efficiency and making money out of that right so policy bazaar is not a startup uh, nike is not a startup uh, um, i think these are sort of large established companies uh, mama earth to me is not a startup Uh, it's nowhere close to listing yet but uh, it's not a startup because they know what works for them and yeah. they're all about like now continuing to build the brand and continuing to scale uh bharat pay uh, is somewhere in the middle right like um, uh, our core business we know what we are building and we know how we are scaling it but we are just venturing into the consumer side and uh, that part of the business sort of operates as a pure startup versus the bharat pay is a bit more oiled machine and uh, and it's about just scaling it right so uh, to me a company once they figure out the core product and once they figure out the go to market uh, uh, like i wouldn't call it a startup whether it's profitable or loss making so my last question for you is what are the attributes of an entrepreneur uh, i think uh, there are two three which matter one is perseverance that's very important like you may be lucky that your first two years are great uh, mm-hmm. 
like but luck will run out at some point of time you don't build a startup for 2 years right so uh, so i think one is perseverance uh, the second to me is uh, like i don't know what's the right word to call it uh, i call it sometimes humility but it's not actually humility it's uh, it's more to do with uh, your ability to listen and take feedback whether it's from your consumers whether it is from your investors whether it is from your team uh, and course correct right because uh, uh, if you're too rigid uh, you may be incredibly lucky that the first idea you thought uh, played out and worked out exactly the way you thought but that's one in a million uh, most businesses need to undergo like five six pivots uh, before they really figure out what works for them and to be able to sort of absorb those pivots you need to be sort of uh, have your ears open and be willing to listen right so uh, or you need to be coachable right uh, everyone needs coaching i need coaching uh, you need to be sort of coachable i think that sort of uh, second and i think the third is sort of uh, you need to be uh, bold and uh, aggressive and sort of uh, Uh, have a large vision and and i don't mean aggressive as a negative term you don't have to like shout at people you don't have to like uh, fight your way through every situation but aggressive in mindset right like ek phod de kuch bada banayenge right so that type of uh, thinking unless you have sort of that passion if your aspiration is to build a uh, 100 crore business and then sell it and retire it is highly unlikely that you will build a 100 crore business mm-hmm. your aspiration is to build a billion dollar company which is profitable hopefully you will get there at at a minimum you will build a 100 crore business and sort of sell it to someone right but uh, but if your starting point is sort of not aspirational enough it's very difficult to keep yourself motivated every day and sort of go after that right so uh, so yeah to me perseverance ability to listen and take feedback and sort of aspirational and aggressive thank you sir it was really great to have you here indeed it was a fruitful session sir my pleasure take care buddy